One important technique that helps us to find the limit of complicated functions, in this case, function g with mirrored graph, as you can see, just going up and down, going up and down, is applying squeeze theorem. In squeeze theorem, we look for two known functions like f and h that we can sandwich function g in between. If the limit of function f and function h around a are both equal to l, then you can conclude that the limit of this complicated function is also f. It's a common challenge for students to find these two functions, f and h. My recommendation is always to look for parent functions, known functions that you already know how they behave. Let's take a look at this example. Find the limit of x squared sine of 1 over x as x approaches 0. So we have function sine of 1 over x. Now let's use Desmos and take a look at the behavior of this function a little bit. I'm opening up Desmos on my end. And show you what the graph looks like. We have sine of 1 over x. So this is the behavior of this weird function. And we want to know what is the limit of this function around 0, around this area. I'm not looking at the limit on these two sides. My focus is the limit of the function around 0. As you can see, you can sandwich this function between two other functions. And what are those functions? You have y equals to 1, and you have y equals to negative 1. Two known constant functions that sandwich this function, this complicated function, and then you know the behavior of these two constant functions. There we go. Let's go back to the board. We're going to start by saying that since sine of 1 over x is bounded between two constant functions, negative 1 and 1. Remember that y equals to 1 and y equals to negative 1. And in general, y equals to b is called constant function. These are the very basic functions that you learned at the beginning of algebra. These functions are basically flat functions. If you have mx plus b and m is equal to 0, the slope is 0, y becomes just b, the flat function. It's easy to see that sine of 1 over x near 0 is sandwiched between negative 1 and 1. What's next? Our goal is to create this function, x squared times sine of 1 over x. So what are we going to do? We're going to do a little bit of algebra. Now, multiply this inequality by x squared. See what happens. You have negative 1 times x squared less than equals to x squared times sine of 1 over x less than or equals to x squared times 1. Then we're going to take the limit. Just compare this with your squeeze theorem. This is your f of x, this is your g of x, and this guy is your h of x. So, so far you have negative x squared less than or equals to x squared sine of 1 over x less than or equals to x squared. Now take the limit. the limit. Well, the limit of f of x as x approaches 0, the limit of negative x squared is 0. The limit of x squared is also 0 around 0. Limit of negative x squared as x approaches 0, let me move this up a little bit, is equal to the limit of x squared as x goes to 0, both of them are equal to 0. 
can say that by applying the squeeze theorem, we can conclude that the limit of x squared sine of 1 over x as x approaches 0 is also 0. This is what we're looking for. So you have a complicated function. You're trying to find the limit. Applying squeeze theorem help you to find the limit of that complicated function. You can go back to Desmos and take a look at the graph of the function as well. So here you have x squared sine of 1 over x, which is basically bounded between negative x squared and also positive x squared. And zoom a little bit and see how it is sandwiched between these two functions around zero. 